Hi guys, I am Arm. The anime recap shared today is the Master of Ragnarok Blesser of Einherjar. It is a very exciting, fantasizing harem transmigration anime. This anime tells the story of the male protagonist Yudo who transmigrates to ancient times with a smartphone and successfully conquers various tribes in another world with the technology of searching for the art of war on Google and making high-end weapons, becoming the leader of the strongest tribe. The most exaggerated thing is that if the tribe he conquers is led by a female, he will directly take her as his sworn little sister sister or daughter. In this way, he begins a life of continuous conquest in ancient times, constantly collecting his sworn sisters or daughters. Why doesn't he choose one of the many beautiful women to be his wife? Everything has to start from the beginning. At the beginning of the story, Yudo, the male protagonist who travels back to ancient times, has been worshipped by countless people with these technologies and has become the patriarch of the Wolf Clan. Recently, Wolf Clan is invaded by Horn Clan. During this battle, Yudo becomes the main target of Horn Clan's attack. Thankfully, his sworn little sister Felicia is always by his side to protect him. Felicia is the peculiar Einherjars in this era, with great abilities beyond the average person. Under her protection, Yuto is unharmed. Eventually, Yudo leads Wolf Clan's warriors to fight with advanced weapons and repels Horn Clan's army. The standout in this battle is Wolf Clan's strongest warrior, Sigrun, who captures Horn Clan's leader, Linnea, in battle. Sigrun has feelings for Yudo and asks Yudo to pet her head as a reward. Yudo, as Sigrun's sworn father, doesn't think much about it and immediately complies with Sigrun's request. After the long war, Yudo cannot rest immediately, and he needs to negotiate with Linnea to resolve the conflicts between Horn Clan and Wolf Clan. He wants Linnea's Horn Clan to become Wolf Clan's subordinate, but Linnea has high self-esteem that she would rather die than become his subordinate. Yudo has to lower his demands and make Linnea his sworn little sister allying with him. Yudo's proposal not only provides Horn Clan with a powerful ally but also preserves Linnea's dignity, which is quite tolerant of the defeated Horn Clan. Linnea eventually agrees to Yudo's offer. After the negotiations, Yudo heaves a sigh of relief and collapses to the ground exhausted. When Yudo wakes up, both Felicia and Sigrun are by his side to to take care of him. They both like Yudo and feel that they and Yudo are unrelated family members and have every chance to marry him. Their seduction is ignored by Yudo, whose only beloved one is his 21st century girlfriend, Mitsuki. In fact, Yudo transmigrates here from the 21st century through the Divine Mirror. The interior of Wolf Clan enshrines another Divine Mirror. Although this Divine Mirror cannot be used for transmigrating, it allows Yudo to use the mobile phone brought with him during transmigration. He uses his phone to learn a lot of advanced techniques and tactics while keeping in touch with Mitsuki on the phone. His greatest wish is to return to the 21st century and be reunited with her. Yudo wants to control more power so he can explore ways to return to the 21st century in this barbaric world. He decides to build a large number of advanced weapons for Horn Clan first so that Horn Clan could be his powerful help and gains Horn Clan's trust. He hands over the responsibility of making weapons to Ingrid, the best blacksmith of Wolf Clan, and pats Ingrid on the shoulder trustingly. Ingrid blushes instantly. It seems that she also likes Yudo. At this point, Linnea approaches Yudo to discuss the relationship between Wolf Clan and Horn Clan. Ever since she allies with Yudo, she has been worried that Wolf Clan would bully Horn Clan with the advantage of force, and asks Yudo to treat her people the way he treats Wolf Clan's people. She promises that she would sacrifice herself for him as long as Yudo promises her. Yudo gently touches Linnea's head, indicating that she is his sister and that he promises her request unconditionally. Linnea is touched by Yudo, and she realizes that Yudo is someone to rely on. At this moment, she falls in love with him. Suddenly, Yudo receives an urgent message that Horn Clan has been invaded by Claw Clan. Yudo quickly summons Wolf Clan's top brass and announces his support for Horn Clan. His decision is opposed by the majority, and few are willing to sacrifice Wolf Clan's soldiers for the safety of Horn Clan. Yudo angrily points out that if he condones Claw Clan's invasion of Horn Clan just after allying with Horn Clan, then other tribes will find Wolf Clan untrustworthy. His words convince everyone and no one dares to raise objections again. Yudo summons all the troops to support Horn Clan. In order to reduce Wolf Clan's casualties, he decides to weaken Claw Clan's combat effectiveness first. He arranges for the army to attack Claw Clan at night for three days in a row so that Claw Clan soldiers cannot sleep peacefully. When the Claw Clans are exhausted, Yudo orders an all out attack, and Wolf Clan's army soon gains the upper hand. In order to turn the situation around, Claw Clan's general personally drives his chariot into the battlefield to fight. His bravery causes panic among Wolf Clan's soldiers. Fortunately, Sigrun leads the cavalry regiment into the battlefield in time to provide support, and with her strong force, she personally kills Claw Clan's general. Wolf Clan eventually wins the battle.
After the battle, Sigrun and Felicia take Yudo to take a bath with them to help him relieve his fatigue. As soon as they try to seduce Yudo, Linnea walks in, and Linnea wants to repay him. While wiping Yudo's back, she offers to let Yudo marry her and become the new leader of Horn Clan. Yudo ponders for a long time wondering how to turn the offer down without hurting Linnea's feelings, and finally says that he needs some time to consider Linnea's proposal. Among Yudo's many sworn little sisters, Felicia is the only one who knows all Yudo's secrets. Although she also likes Yudo and gives importance to Linnea's proposal, she is more afraid of Yudo's sudden return to the 21st century. In order to keep Yudo, she takes advantage of being alone with Yudo and tries to persuade Yudo and Linnea to marry, because she thinks that as long as Yudo gets married in this world, he will stay, no matter how hard she tries. Yudo never agrees. This makes Felicia realize that Yudo is still deeply in love with Mitsuki and can only give up convincing Yudo. After this, Wolf Clan's people hold a grand banquet to celebrate the victory of the battle. They all feel that Yudo can lead Wolf Clan to become the most powerful clan in the world. At this time, everyone notices that Steinthor, the leader of Lightning Clan, has actually broken in. Wolf Clan and Lightning Clan have a deep feud, and everyone knows that Steinthor must not be here to express his congratulations to Yudo. Steinthor, one of the three strongest Einherjars in the world, smashes the weapon of one of Wolf Clan's officers. Later, he notices Linnea next to Yudo, taunting her for not being qualified of commanding Horn Clan. His behavior infuriates Yudo, who looks back at him hostily for a long time, and everyone else present is too frightened to speak. In the end, Steinthor is the first to give in and finds an excuse to leave. In fact, Steinthor comes this time to pry Yudo's ability. From Yudo's fierce eyes, he takes Yudo as a potential threat to him and decides to attack Wolf Clan as soon as possible. Yudo also senses Steinthor's hostility towards him, and he intends to prepare as soon as possible in case of Lightning Clan suddenly attacks. Just then, a pair of twin sisters come to him out of admiration for Yudo and want to be his wife. They are the green-haired Albertina and the purple-haired Christina. They are Einherjars with special abilities. After they are rejected by Yudo, they state that they want to be his sworn little sisters and be by his side if Yudo rejects them because the person he wants to marry is Linnea. Few people know about Linnea's desire to marry him, which makes Yudo realize that that the two girls have a strong ability to gather intelligence and have value for use. He thinks that having them as his partners will help him fight against Steinthor, and decisively agrees to become their sworn elder brother. After that, Albertina and Christina often stick to Yudo. Their existence alarms Linnea, who fears that Yudo will fall in love with them and decides to find a way to seduce Yudo. That night, Linnea sneaks into Yudo's room. As soon as she sees Yudo, she takes off her clothes and hugs him tightly. Yudo is almost tempted, but fortunately, his willpower is strong enough to push Linnea away in time. He tries to keep Linnea from being sad, and tells her all his secrets, saying that sooner or later he will find a way to return to Mitsuki's side. Linnea's reaction surprises Yudo. She wants to marry him even though she knows that Yudo might leave this world. Yudo finds himself in a dilemma, but Albertina and Felicia suddenly break into his room to report the emergency, and he doesn't have to respond to Linnea immediately. Yudo learns that Lightning Clan has assembled an army and is heading towards Wolf Clan. Yudo realizes that Wolf Clan is about to face a huge crisis, and quickly calls an operational meeting of his subordinates to discuss strategies against Steinthor. According to intelligence, Steinthor likes to charge directly in battles and never uses any tactics, but he can always defeat the enemy head-on. Yudo decides to avoid going head-to-head -head with Lightning Clan after thinking over it discreetly, taking advantage of Steinthor's reckless character to set a trap. Yudo first gathers all the troops to test Lightning Clan's combat effectiveness. At the beginning of the battle, the strength of the two sides does not show a significant gap until Steinthor personally joins the battlefield. Steinthor wields a hammer and fights frantically on the battlefield, breaking up Yudo's army in one fell swoop. Seeing that the situation is not good, Yudo quickly commands the army to retreat and orders the soldiers to drop their weapons. These sophisticated weapons are treasures to Lightning Clan soldiers. They are all busy picking up weapons, and no one obeys Steinthor's orders at all. This gives Yudo's army plenty of time to escape. It takes Steinthor a long time to lead his soldiers to catch up with Yudo's army again. He discovers that Yudo's army has crossed a river and quickly commands his soldiers to cross it. Steinthor doesn't realize that he has fallen for Yudo's scheme. Yudo has already sent his men to build a dam in the upper reaches of the river. When Steinthor crosses the river with his soldiers, Yudo immediately orders his men to release the flood. The rushing river washes away most of the Lightning Clan soldiers and causes Steinthor to be seriously injured, and Lightning Clan cannot get Wolf Clan in trouble for a while. After this battle, Yudo's reputation reaches its peak. Yudo's subordinates always believe that Yudo has spent too much energy in the battle and needs a good rest, so they arrange for many 
girls to take him to the hot springs. The girls are all Yudo's sworn little sisters or sworn daughters. They all want to be closer to Yudo and often seek opportunities to have physical contact with him. Wherever Yudo hides, girls are waiting there to tease him. Yudo finally gives up the struggles and chooses to enjoy this moment of happiness. When Yudo returns to his palace, he recalls the wonderful experience from just now. He can't help dwelling on the happy lifetime when he just came into this world. Two years ago, he became good friends with Lopcher, the son of Wolf Clan's leader, and they often took Lopcher's sister Felicia around, which was the happiest experience since Yudo's transmigration. At one point, Yudo regarded Lopcher as his most trusted partner and even told Lopcher all his secrets. Unfortunately, their friendship ended up shattered in front of the benefit of interests. Back then, Wolf Clan was facing the crisis of being invaded by Horn Clan, and the leader of Wolf Clan Farbody believed that Yudo had enough advanced technology to be the only person capable of leading Wolf Clan out of the crisis. Farbody announced that Yudo would be the new Wolf Clan leader for Wolf Clan's future, believing that he is the rightful Wolf Clan heir. Lobster tried to kill Yudo to force Farbody to change his mind. To his surprise, Farbody blocked the sword for Yudo. Frightened, Lobster fled Wolf Clan. Farbody eventually died of his injuries, and Yudo became Wolf Clan's new leader. Leader. Yudo is saddened by thinking of Farbody's death and clears out memories right away. At this time, he learns the news that the newly rising Panther Clan has defeated Claw Clan. According to intelligence, Panther Clan uses stirrups and advanced weapons that only Wolf Clan has. Yudo is lost in thought, knowing that the people who make the equipment are mostly loyal to him, except for Lobcher, the son of the former Wolf Clan leader. Therefore, Yudo speculates that Lobcher must be inside Panther Clan at this time. Yudo's guess is correct. Lobcher is now the leader of Panther Clan, and Lobcher believes that Yudo has ruined his life and wants to find an opportunity to take revenge on Yudo and regain control of Wolf Clan. In order to weaken Wolf Clan's power, he first leads Panther Clan to attack Wolf Clan's ally, Horn Clan. When Yudo receives the news of the invasion of Horn Clan, he immediately leads a small group of troops to take the lead in supporting Horn Clan. The battle is very tough. The equipment of Panther Clan is as advanced as Wolf Clan's, and the Panther Clan is also superior in numbers. Fortunately, Yudo is far superior to Lobster tactically. He disguises many wagons carrying soldiers as grain trucks and plans to quietly surround Panther Clan's soldiers. By the time Lobster reacts, the carriages have already laid siege to Panther Clan, who is instantly at a disadvantage. Lobster realizes that he will lose the war soon, and decides to use his trump card, which is his subordinate Saijin. Saijin is an Einherjar who can use mysterious spells to turn soldiers into berserkers. Under Saijin's manipulation, Panther Clan turns into Berserker and suddenly gains an overwhelming advantage in battle. Strangely, after Saijin uses the mysterious spell, Yudo's body emits a strange light for a moment. He still doesn't know what effect the mysterious spell would have on him. Meanwhile, Lofter, taking advantage of Panther Clan's dominant position, leads a cavalry regiment to storm Wolf Clan's army, intending to kill Yudo himself. Lofter has been overwhelmed by the thought of revenge, and he does not stop attacking even when Felicia stands in front of Yudo. Fortunately, Yudo intervenes in time to stop him. Immediately, Sigrun arrives on a camel to support them. Lobster's horses fear camels and lose control after smelling them. Lobster can only temporarily give up revenge and command Panther Clan's retreat. Yudo heaves a sigh of relief that he has finally stopped Panther Clan's invasion of Horn Clan. After this battle, everyone knows that Panther Clan and Wolf Clan are enemies, and Lightning Clan sends an emissary to visit Lobster. Both Lightning Clan and Panther Clan have a common enemy, Wolf Clan. They quickly become allies and agree to destroy Wolf Clan together. Their union will bring a huge threat to Wolf Clan. Meanwhile, Yuto is on the phone with his girlfriend, Mitsuki. He reports to her that he is safe after each battle to prevent her from worrying. Yudo, as Wolf Clan's leader, is very busy. After he finishes the call, he quickly leads his men to patrol the streets. During the tour, Yudo meets a girl who looks almost like Mitsuki. Yudo mistakes the girl Mitsuki and quickly takes her to his palace and asks her how she transmigrates to this world. Felicia is nearby, and as soon as she hears Yudo mention Mitsuki, she immediately rushes up. Unexpectedly, Yudo identifies the wrong person. The girl states that she is called Leafa, comes from an empire near Wolf Clan, and likes to travel around. She is curious about the transmigration that Yudo has just mentioned, and asks what he meant by what he just said. Yudo apologizes embarrassingly for his recklessness. In order to alleviate the embarrassment, he confesses that he is a transmigrator brought to this world by the power of the Divine Mirror, and mistakes her as his girlfriend in the other world. Leafa immediately points out that the Divine Mirror usually has two sides. One side is the entrance to transmigrate and the other is the exit. She sees Yudo's surprised expression, and proudly boasts that she loves to study all kinds of magical things and has a deep understanding of the Divine Mirror. In order to show her rich knowledge, she casts a strange spell on the spot, making Yudo immobile. 
Yuo completely buys Leafa's words and hurries her to use the spell to help him return to the 21st century. Leafa says pitifully that she is not good at mysterious spells related to transmigration. As far as she knows, only Einherjar's Saijin of Panther Clan is able to use mystical spells. If Yuo wants to travel back in time to the 21st century, he must enlist Saijin's help. The information provided by Leafa gives Yudo hope, and she is warmly hosted by Yudo. Sometime later, Albertina and Christina bring news to Yudo that Panther Clan and Lightning Clan's combined forces are attacking Wolf Clan. Yudo realizes that his enemies have united and hastens to gather all his armies to meet against them. As soon as the battle begins, Steinthor leads Lightning Clan's army in a fierce attack on Wolf Clan. Lightning Clan's army is equipped with advanced weapons provided by Panther Clan, and its combat effectiveness has been greatly improved, seeing Wolf Clan's army at a disadvantage. Sigron rushes out and tries to defeat Steinthor to throw Lightning Clan into chaos. Steinther's strength is among the best in the world, and even though Wolf Clan's other generals have joined in the battle to support Sigrun, Steinthor easily defeats them all. The situation is very bad for Yudo. Yudo's men feel that Wolf Clan would be defeated and advise him to retreat first. Yudo refuses, unwilling to abandon any of his subordinates. He personally rushes to the front line to cheer on the Wolf Clan soldiers, promising to fight with them until the last minute. The soldiers are encouraged by Yudo and all cheered up. In the end, Wolf Clan gains the upper hand in this war with his tenacity. Capacity. Meanwhile, the battle between Steinthor and Sigrun also changes. Sigrun refuses to admit defeat and resumes her attack on Steinthor. She takes advantage of Steinthor's contempt for her, pretends to be defeated by him, and then takes the opportunity to slash him with a sword. Before Steinthor can address his wounds, he receives the bad news that Lightning Clan's logistics unit has been attacked by Yudo. Steinthor, fearing that Lightning Clan will suffer serious losses if he continues to fight, quickly retreats with Lightning Clan's soldiers. After Lightning Clan leaves the battlefield, Panther Clan would not have been able to defeat Wolf Clan alone. Lopter simply rushes straight into Wolf Clan in an attempt to kill Yudo, but his attack is stopped by Felicia. Lopter has to find another way, believing that Wolf Clan would be defeated without Yudo's command. He instructs Saijin to use a mysterious spell on Yudo that will bring Yudo back to the 21st century. Yudo sees a light appear on him, just like the last time he fought Panther Clan, and guesses that Saijin has used a mysterious spell on him. He quickly hands the phone to Felicia and teaches her how to use it to communicate with him. Yudo then disappears out of thin air, leaving only Felicia crying sadly in place. Yudo transmigrates to the 21st century under the influence of mysterious spells. He notices that he is next to the Divine Mirror, which is hidden in Mitsuki's room by her. As soon as he sees Mitsuki, he hugs her excitedly. The lovers finally reunite after more than two years of separation. Yudo is worried about Wolf Clan, and he tries to contact Felicia using Mitsuki's cell phone. Unfortunately, the call can't get through, and it seems that he has to wait for Felicia to return to another Divine Mirror. Mitsuki learns of Yudo's worries and gently soothes him. She tries to help him forget his troubles and takes him shopping at the mall. They haven't dated for a long time, and the intimate time they have been missing for a long time makes them feel incredibly sweet. While shopping, Yudo thinks of Wolf Clan's people from time to time and worries about their situation. Suddenly, Mitsuki receives a call from Felicia. Yudo quickly picks up the phone and learns that after he disappears from the battlefield, Panther Clan and Lightning Clan once again join forces to attack Wolf Clan. Wolf Clan is thrown into chaos because of Yudo's disappearance and suffers heavy losses in the battle. Felicia says she wants Yudo to return to Wolf Clan, but she won't force it because she prefers Yudo to live a happy life. Yudo hangs up the phone in silence. He doesn't want to leave Mitsuki behind and go back to Wolf Clan. Mitsuki on the side hears the content of the call, and she sees his worried look and secretly makes a decision. Sometime later, Mitsuki takes the Divine Mirror and Yudo to the place where Yudo has transmigrated. She tells Yudo that if he wants to return to Wolf Clan, she will be firmly by his side because her love for him trumps everything. Yudo is touched, and he knows that Mitsuki's transmigrating with him means that she is going to give up her current life. At this moment, infinite love for Mitsuki surges in Yudo's mind, and he sincerely proposes to Mitsuki. After she agrees, Mitsuki throws herself into Yudo's arms excitedly. They kiss each other affectionately in the moonlight. I believe that nothing will be able to separate them anymore. After this, Yudo uses the Divine Mirror to take Mitsuki back to Wolf Clan. Under his leadership, Wolf Clan wins the war. Yudo will be the leader of Wolf Clan and lead his people to a happy life. That's the end of this anime. The male protagonist Yudo in this anime is so loyal to love and I rarely see such a male protagonist who firmly loves a girl in anime. He lives in a different world from Mitsuki, but he never stops thinking about her. Even though he is in ancient society, he is fiercely pursued by countless girls, and the girls are even willing to become his concubines. 
At the same time, I also admire Mitsuki's bravery. When she learns that Yudo hesitates before returning to Wolf Clan, she offers to follow Yudo through. Even if she has to adjust to a different life in another world and make friends again, she would have no regrets. For that reason alone, I think Mitsuki is a brave girl and she deserves to be loved. As for the other girls in the anime, I hope they all get their own happiness. Thank you for watching. If you like this recap, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to my channel. I also have recaps of many wonderful and interesting anime on my channel. Come and check if you like them. Bye!